from the hundreds where a frog got it fucking jumping. I'm from the hundreds where K Dog was a fucking dog. But I'm from the hundreds where a pops got it fucking popping. I'm from the hundreds where a fool was a fucking fool. With I'm from the hundreds, Rose Moore, Roseland, West Pool, man. Man, I'm from the hundreds, so you know how we do it. Man, we run shit, man. I'm A well-known legend in the streets of Chicago and the world, you could say. Known for changing the dynamics in the, the city, changing the dynamics in the urban community. Known for being a leader, a king amongst kings at the end of the day. Willing to stand up against the powers that be. King David understood that black is beautiful. Black is power. He wanted to change the dynamics in his community. This brother right here was very influential in a lot, a lot of brothers' lives. He was a devil disciple. He rose throughout the ranks of devil disciple and became the king. He is very instrumental in the beginning stages of Devil Disciples. You have Chief Malik, another influential brother. Chief Malik also known as Jeff Ford, this brother right here as just like King David. These brothers are leaders. These brothers change the dynamics in the community. These brothers brought a black consciousness To the people. They got into politics. They were feeding the people. They they got into wanting to build medical centers for our people. These brothers I'm speaking on are legendary brothers. Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover. This brother. Was very impactful. In raising the vibration. And bringing the concept. 
of growth and development to our people where people could grow and develop through their intellectual properties to be anything that they man could think of, they could do it. Very big on education. Very big on social development. Was very big on being in the political arena to make our communities better by being a political force. This is King Shorty and Mickey Bull. King Shorty took over the reign of Black Disciple after being appointed by the body of Black Disciples after the death of King David. White Cloud was King Shorty right hand man. His number two, matter of fact. This is OG Commander. A lot of people speak on King David as King David never was BD. But in all reality, he was. He was a devil disciple. Then he went to BD. Then he went to BGD. Richard Strong. This brother was very influential in bringing the disciples to the north side to Cabrini Greens. And setting up shop for the disciples. And when I mean setting up shop, I'm meaning setting up an area that the disciples could come to the north side in the Cabrini Greens area for them to rotate, move around, navigate, have something that they could claim and say, hey, we right here, this is where the disciples at. The infamous Kilroy. There was a lot of brothers, a lot of brothers who held it down back in the days, who stood firm, who are actually legendary in their own ways because they did some things that had to be done. So they club, they tribe, they organization can go to the next level. Kilroy was one of those individuals. Prince Old Timer. I'm just taking you back so you can see the individuals that White Cloud, you know, came up under, the people that he recognized, you know, the people who was active in these days and times. Now, Prince Old Timer was the prince for King David when they made the merger of BGD. King David picked Prince Old Timer and Larry Hoover picked Prince Tennessee. Right here you have another brother who did some very, very monumental things in this culture when it comes down to it. This is Ike Taylor. And Ike Taylor is a high supreme gangster and not just being a high supreme gangster, but he was the co-chair of GD. And what he did was he brought GD, or high supreme gangsters, to the west side of Chicago, which is a prominently, you know, vice lord territory. And held it down and established GDs, or high supreme gangsters, on the west side of Chicago. That's a fact. This is U.S. Floyd. This brother... Brought GDs to 95th Street. Yeah, this U.S. Floyd, he did that. From 95th to the 100th, U.S. Floyd established GDs. Gangsters. So now it's time to tell the untold story of White Cloud, who all the individuals I just showed previously 
the King Davis, the Larry Hoover, the Jeff Ford. This brother White Cloud embraced all these brothers. He took the things that they was teaching and the things they were doing in their community and he embodied them and he utilized these things throughout his life and he embedded them in the community. Food programs, education for the kids, the one love concept bringing all organizations together. Check out the story of White Cloud. July the 10th, 1966. In Soldier Field Stadium, 50,000 people heard Martin Luther King attack Chicago's slums and reaffirm the commitment to nonviolence. I do not see the answer to our dilemma and our problem in violence. Our movement's adherence to nonviolence has been a major factor in the creation of a moral climate that has made progress possible. We need each other. The Negro needs the white man to free him from his fears, and the white man needs the Negro to free him from his guilt. I'm tired of marching for something that should have been mine at birth. I don't mind saying to you tonight. I don't mind saying to you tonight that I'm tired of the tension surrounding our days. I don't mind saying to you tonight that I'm tired of living every day under the threat of death. I have no modern complex. I want to live as long as anybody in this building tonight. And sometimes I begin to doubt whether I'm going to make it through. I must confess I'm tired. So you see what was going on in 1966. Martin Luther King, he was just coming to Chicago for the freedom movement because brothers and sisters was getting uh, unfair housing. You know, they wasn't able to move in the nice communities. They could only stay in the projects and people was marching and people was, you know, mad about that, you know, at the end of the day. So that's why Martin Luther King came to Chicago. And he went, went up against Mayor Daly, senior. So you, then you had the West Side riots going on. You know, then uh, actually in 1966, that's when White Cloud, you know, became a devil disciple under King David. So, you know, you have to keep in mind the term he becoming a devil disciple you know, White Cloud seeing all this stuff going on, the unfair treatment of his people and things of that nature. And, you know, you know, his family, like his mom and dad, they from the South. So, you know, they from Starksville, Mississippi. So, you know, it's a lot of uh, injustices going on down there. So it just, you know, passed on since they came to Chicago and White Cloud seeing the same thing that his parents you know, experience down in Mississippi. So White Cloud, he really didn't um, care for the police, just keeping it real. He he had uh, a feeling about the police, he felt some type of way. And it's not necessarily because the police was, you know, doing a job. It was because the way the police who wasn't doing a job correctly would treat brothers and sisters, you know, unfairly, unfairly. So he definitely didn't rock with the police, you know, because, you know, he was, he definitely wasn't feeling their tactics in a way that, you know, the police was doing his people. Cause don't forget that all these different street tribes, they was formed to protect the community. They was they was formed to keep out these other uh agitators, you know, such as you heard about uh the Diablos, you know what I'm saying, which was a white gang, you know, and, and they'd come in the community, you know, try to terrorize, you know, uh the grandmas and mothers of the community and the, the young kids in the community. 
you know, then you, you get caught walking in a community, they're going to try to jump on you and beat you up. And, you know, it's a lot of different examples of that. You know, we could take it back to Lenar, uh, Lenar Clark. You know, this, you know, do y'all homework on Lenar Clark? Real talk. But you had a lot of different disciples back in those days as well. You know, it wasn't just uh, one faction of disciples. It was a lot of different disciples, you know. And they all came under one bet of banner, you know. Renegade disciples, east side disciples, Serkine uh, disciples, Gonzato disciples. You had all type of different disciples at the end of the day. But White Cloud, he was a devil disciple. And he went to Bill Grammar School on 60th. He went to upper grade. The, uh, his high school was called Vincennes Upper Grade Center. Real talk. Now, he necessarily didn't finish there, but he did get his GED when he went to St. Charles. He had plenty of friends in the hood, the West Brothers, <laughs> and everybody know that White Cloud was, you know, good for shooting them dice. And people might not know they were very close to Fluky. Fluky Stokes. Yeah, yeah, Fluky. Real talk. So, back in them days, it was a lot of black power being expounded upon. People understanding how they black is beautiful. So, brothers like King David, like I was talking about previous, and I'm showing you how all this intertwined, how, you know, White Cloud took the vision of King David, you know, and implemented it. Because at the end of the day, you know, brothers just wanted their communities to be better. And whatever separated brothers... Brothers like King David, Larry Hoover, Jeff Ford, you know, these type of individuals, Bobby Gores, all these individuals tried to consolidate and bring it together under one banner, reaching out to each other. Hey, brother, you want to come over here with me? Hey, brother, you want to come over here with me? Like I said previously, Like I said previously, Chief Malik offered Larry Hoover to be an ambassador of the Gangster Stones. So here you see the Supreme Gangsters, High Supreme Gangsters. And when I say that White Cloud implemented what King David wanted, that's for a fact. Because he's the one who came up with the one love policy, the one love concept, the one love movement. When you see the one finger in the L, that's White Cloud. He came up with that. And the reason I'm showing this high school right now and I'm mentioning the one love movement that White Cloud came up with is because at this high school right here, a devil disciple a devil disciple shot Larry Hoover, which was a high supreme gangster. This is all public record. This is already known. Some know it, some don't. This is not to be brought up to stir anything up. But this is history. And I'm showing right now. I'm showing this right now. Because even though a devil disciple shot Larry Hoover, 
Larry Hoover still came together with King David. Also, Larry Hoover gave his blessings for White Cloud to be able to delegate situations for the G's. For the gangsters. You have to understand the relationship with Larry Hoover and White Cloud. And you have to understand what type of person White Cloud was. To have Larry Hoover give his blessings. And give White Cloud the ability to delegate situations for the GDs. So that meant that White Cloud was the only individual on both sides, on the GD side and BD side, who was able to delegate situations for both sides officially. King Shorty was in Wisconsin, locked up in prison. White Cloud was King Shorty's right hand man. Now, Understand this. White Cloud was a devil disciple. King David was a devil's disciple. It went from devil disciple, BD, then BGD for King David. That's the that's how it went for him. I just have to get at history, too, because a lot of people uh, have said that King David wasn't a BD. And I definitely beg to differ with that. Because we definitely uh, have different factual evidence to prove that black disciples existed in the 60s. Way before king david passed away unfortunately so white cloud did a lot of positive things in the community he did a lot of positive things he made sure that kids went to school it, in fact, it's a story that when White Cloud heard a kid didn't go to school, he used to beef with the parents. He'll be getting at the parents like, hey, why ain't you got your kid going to school? White Cloud was very big on, on school, on education. Now, I mean, White Cloud uh, got into some things in his life where he had to go, you know, go down the road. He went to prison. He did a couple years in prison and his case got overturned in two years. This is where he would come in contact with Larry Hoover. Like you see this footage with White, this picture with White Cloud. This is where he get in contact with Larry. And Larry get a blessing. Go ahead, White Cloud. In them days and times, like I showed you, they had something called the Disciple Center. 
on 60th and Halstead. Understand that it wasn't just the Disciple Center for the BDs, but BDs and GDs, you know, the gangsters, I should say. Disciples and gangsters could go in the Disciple Center. We Concerned with my activities in the Panthers, which at that point was exclusively security issues. Um, we were buying weapons at that point. Um, we weren't. Uh, we didn't have any type of working relationship with the largest street gang at that time, which was the Blackstone Rangers. They had about 2,000 members and were well armed. And um, at some point, a meeting was um, arranged. Uh, we met with Jeff Fort uh, of the Blackstone Rangers and. At that meeting, we were in a Catholic church. I remember that night we were setting up, and Jeff Ford told Fred Hampton, there, there is not going to be any Black Panthers in the city of Chicago. You guys either join the Blackstone Rangers or get out of the city. And um, Hampton came away from that meeting uh, feeling like we were going to eventually have to do battle with these guys. There was no compromise. They didn't. They couldn't associate, they, the Blackstone Rangers, couldn't associate our purpose politically with uh, their gang turf thing. So uh, we were going to have to deal with them. So the word went out to me to basically... It was a time that I was visiting 
uh, the scum. It's a wide open city as far as friendship is concerned. So, like I was saying, the Disciples Center was for all disciples, gangsters. They all came together. White Cloud was very charismatic like that. He had a way with the people. He had a way with the ladies. He definitely was a, a ladies' man at the end of the day. He had three boys and he got two daughters. But you know, all these different tribes and street organizations and clubs, they all had their own facility. You see the Blackstones had a restaurant. You see the Lords had pool halls and clothes and stores and you know, the disciples, they had the disciple center and they had businesses and they was employing brothers and sisters. And the reason I showed you William O'Neill, which was the guy who infiltrated the Black Panthers, the one that the government used to get into the Black Panthers and to bring down the Black Panthers and things of that nature because the powers that be don't want black brothers, brown brothers. They don't want people to unify. They want people to stay beefing with each other, keep killing each other, keep going to jail. Citywide Coalition called LSD. In previous weeks, Lords, Stones, and Disciples they closed down more than $80 million in construction around Chicago. Now they were shutting down construction sites in their community because they was failing to hire black contractors to provide black opportunity for blacks to get jobs. So I show that to put this on their mind, to change, you know, raise their awareness that this happened in the 60s and that they can do that now. But at the same time, say, if you still claim you're a vice lord today, or you're a gangster disciple today, or a stone today, look at what your, uh, those before you, your predecessors, were doing. So obviously you're doing something contrary to what it was supposed to be about. As you can see, the LSD movement, the Black Power movement, those are the things that I was saying that the powers that be don't want to happen. Any black leader that you see that we had, the Malcolm X's, the Martin Luther King's, you know, the Marcus Garvey's, anybody, you know, who tried to bring a change, Fred Hampton, something always happened to him. So White Cloud, like I said previously, that he came up with the one love concept, the one love movement, where everybody would love each other, embrace each other. He tried to bring a difference in the community. And it was recognized in the community. He was loved, appreciated throughout the neighborhood, throughout the city. Everybody loved White Cloud. He held it down for the black disciples. He was King Shorty, right hand man. 1983 ish till his death. That was his reign. And he left a legacy. He left a mark on the community in the world. You see right here as well, you get brothers in the disciple center shooting pool. 
building a brotherly bond, showing brotherhood. Unity, love. Brothers realize what the bigger picture is. That we not the ops. The ops is the oppressor. Like I told you before. I showed you all the brothers previously, the Chief Maliks, the King Davis, the Larry Hoovers, because they are great men. But I'm showing you them brothers as well because everything that they wanted in the community, far as food programs, White Cloud had a hand at that far as stopping the violence between different tribes white cloud he calmed that down and stopped that as well like i told you he had rain over the g's and he had reign over the, the disciples. And he was the only, only brother able to go to Motown. Which is an area that have a very strong black stone presence. As I just showed you, the black disciples clubhouse the disciple center it was raided and they felt like the the police was doing what they did to the black panthers a uh, party a self-defense clubhouse coming up with false allegations and things of that nature they was trying to diminish these brothers character but as you can see right there, as I just showed you, that brother who was at the podium, his name was Michael Shane. Michael Shane was the national representative for the black disciples. And he was at a press conference talking about the medical aid that our community needs. You see, White Cloud is definitely a family man. He loved his, his daughters. He loved his sons. He loved his family. This is an actual photo of a peace treaty that was agreed upon. by Chicago organizations. Stop the violence, stop the beef, stop the smoke, stop the drilling. That what they was on back in the days. Cause like I keep stating, it was a bigger picture. You had Lord Stones and Disciples all marching together. Everybody together. Everybody. You see the Stones got the red Tim's on. Lords got the gold ones on. Disciples got the blue ones on. And they all unified. And this is what the powers that be, this is what they feared. They feared a unified force of black brothers who are intelligent. They fear those type of things. That's why they implement and do the things that they do today. 
to keep us focused on everything but what the vision is for all tribes. Better our community, better ourselves, better our people, better living situations, better wages. These are all the things that these brothers was fighting for. That was Mickey Cogwell. Mickey Cogwell spoke to politicians, went to the White House to speak on behalf of the Black Peace Stones to inform the government of the different programs and the different positive things that they had going in the community. Young brothers. And that's why I keep bringing these brothers up because this is what they wanted to happen in their communities. And this is what White Cloud was doing. Bringing about a change in the community. Showing brotherly love. Creating programs for the kids to eat. Coming up with the One Love Movement. That's major. White Cloud has a support base. His family, his family loved him. He had brothers. His brothers always had his back. Still to this day, they celebrate their brother. They keep the legend and the story of White Cloud living. On certain days, you know, like birthdays and holidays and different special days that was, you know, special to White Cloud. They celebrate White Cloud and brothers and sisters from all over the city, his family and friends and people from the community will come together and celebrate White Cloud. His brother Eli will put these things together. White Cloud had so many people that he helped. Countless people. He always been family orientated. He always was fresh, fly, always got some cold gear on. He had a clean, clean caddy. He would never let nobody ride in the back of it. Nobody could ride in the back of it. So you didn't see White Cloud with a lot of people in his car. A lot of times, White Cloud would be solo dolo. Whipping and dipping throughout the city, making his rounds. Showing his face, shaking hands. Things of that nature. Well respected. You have to be respected. To get respected. On all sides of the fence. That speaks volumes. A lot of people has a lot of different things to say when it comes to White Cloud. One thing I could say is that 
the same way they took out Fred Hampton, assassinated Fred Hampton, same way they did Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, it's the same way for White Cloud. When brothers trying to change and make a change in a community and brothers have the ability to stop the violence, brothers is feeding the community. Bringing about unity, bringing about love. The powers that be don't want that. And again, that's why it was very important to to put William O'Neill and people like him in these organizations, which was the the guy again that helped the powers that be take down Fred Hampton. It was something called Cointel Pro. And that was he was being utilized for. To get information about different black power organizations. So the powers that be can bring them down. The devil disciples. The High Supreme Gangsters, the Vice Lords, the Blackstones was created to protect the community, to bring about unity, to bring about love, to bring about a consciousness to our people. So people can understand their worth, know who they are. Because you had white people saying, you can't drink from our fountain. You can't go to the schools that we go to. You can't ride the buses we ride. You can't live where we live. You have to stay in the projects. These groups was formed to help uplift our people. And that's why I say that White Cloud embodied all of that. He embodied all of that because all these different brothers I done showed you, White Cloud seen it. He seen them. He experienced it. It rubbed off on him. King David wanted to bring a change in this community. White Cloud wanted to bring a change in this community. Larry Hoover gave White Cloud the ability to navigate with the gangsters and have authority over the gangsters. And White Cloud was BD. Understand the power that White Cloud had Understand the legacy that this man left. Understand the things he implemented. Understand the reason he died. They found White Cloud shot in the head three times. In the car. Dead. Head shots. A lot of people speculate a lot of different things. Some people say, hey, was it the government that did it? Because, you know, this brother unified people. Got food programs going on in the community. Stopping the violence. Stopping the beef. We know COINTELPRO is very heavy. 
We see that they try to infiltrate different organizations, seeing what they did to the Black Panthers. Was it COINTELPRO? Was it the government that did White Cloud like that? Was it his affiliation with Fluky Stokes and the things that Fluky had going on? Was it because the rumors that, you know, his power got too much? He had too much influence? Everybody was listening to him. And some brothers just couldn't swallow that pill. You have a lot of different reasons that people say, hey, this might have happened, that it might have happened. People even say, hey, did he sleep with somebody's wife? And that caused his demise because he was a lady man. So maybe because he was a ladies man and he was sleeping with certain individuals' wives, that's why he met his demise. Who will ever know the truth about what really happened to White Cloud? White Cloud is physically dead and gone. People going to speculate. People going to have rumors. But nobody got factual facts. But we do know White Cloud left a legacy. We do know he stood firm on what he believed in. We do know that White Cloud made a change in his community. We do know that White Cloud fed the people. Fed the children. We also know White Cloud made sure them kids in his hood went to school. And if they wasn't going to school and he see them walking down the block, He'll knock on the parents door and say, hey, next time your kid don't go to school, me and you going to have a problem. We also know White Cloud didn't die in vain. If it was the government, if it was whoever, whatever situation, whatever happened to White Cloud, he didn't die in vain. Because his story, his legacy, his mark, his impact, the things he done while he was on this earth will always be known. I'm tired of marching for something that should have been mine at birth. I don't mind saying to you tonight. I don't mind saying to you tonight that I'm tired of the tension surrounding our days. I don't mind saying to you tonight that I'm tired of living every day under the threat of death. I have no modern complex. I want to live as long as anybody in this building tonight. And sometimes I begin to doubt whether I'm going to make it through. I must confess I'm tired.